Blank is referred to as a lifelong process of maintaining sobriety, which involves not only the drug addict alcoholic, but also the entire family system. A. Ambivalence. B. Maintenance. C. Recovery. D. Change talk. C. Recovery. Recovery is a process of change through which people improve their health and wellness, live self-directed lives, and strive to reach their full potential. Being in recovery is when those positive changes and values become part of a voluntarily adopted lifestyle. Individuals are working on successfully managing their addiction and regaining control of your life and handling negative feelings without using substances. A chemical dependency counselor is conducting an individual counseling session with a married 38-year-old man about his persistent alcohol use. The client drinks heavily twice a month and consumes alcohol on weekends and during gatherings. He has occasionally missed work on Mondays while recovering from significant intoxication, and on one occasion he was charged with a DUI which led to this court-ordered therapy. The pattern of the client's alcohol use is best described as a. Recreational alcohol use. B. Alcohol intoxication. C. Alcohol use disorder. D. Alcohol withdrawal. C. Alcohol use disorder. The client satisfied at least two of the 11 likely criteria for alcohol use disorder. The most significant are those that might change the course of his life such as missing work and legal issues. Since the client is said to only drink on weekends, withdrawal symptoms, such as delirium trends, etc., are not mentioned in this scenario and may not materialize. Alcohol use for recreational purposes involves sporadic ingestion at times and in ways that avoid negative family, employment, and social consequences, but used heavily enough to produce a pleasurable effect. Slurred speech, impaired gait attention and memory impairment, and other symptoms of alcohol intoxication are not mentioned in this scenario. There are six distinct roles that family members commonly take on when residing in a home where one or more members of the household are drug or alcohol dependent. Which role has the goal of smoothing things over within the family by making excuses for their loved one's conduct in an effort to protect the family while telling themselves that drinking isn't an issue and making light of a serious situation? A. The enabler. B. The addicted. C. The hero. D. The mascot. A. The enabler. One who supports a loved one in maintaining self-destructive behaviors is referred to as an enabler. Most frequently enabling patterns are linked to substance abuse and addiction, but they can also refer to behaviors and close relationships that encourage risky or problematic behavior and make it easier for it to continue. An enabler frequently wants to ignore all of the facts in order to defend and hold on to their loved one. They believe that denying reality will keep things the same, but in reality doing so puts their loved one at greater risk. While a spouse is frequently an enabler, it can also be taken on by a child. What stage of addiction recovery is the most difficult for substance abusers who are characterized by their defensiveness and endless justification of their behavior due to a lack of insight into the negative impact of excessive drug or alcohol use? A. Preparation stage. B. Contemplation stage. C. Maintenance stage. D. Pre-contemplation stage. D. Pre-contemplation stage. 
In the pre-contemplation stage people are not really considering changing at this point, and they are not looking for any form of assistance. In this stage, people frequently defend their existing poor habits and do not see the issue with them. When others try to persuade them to change, they could get defensive. A person may develop an increased blank to a substance when the substance is used repeatedly for a long period of time and requires larger and larger doses having to be taken to produce the same desired effect. A. Tolerance. B. Resistance. C. Potency. D. Immunity. A. Tolerance. Drug tolerance or drug insensitivity is a pharmacological concept describing an individual's reduced reaction to a drug following its repeated use. The effects of the drugs may be amplified again by increasing the dosage, although this may expedite tolerance development and further blunt the drug's effects. A person has to take bigger dosages of a drug to have the same impact they got earlier in their drug use as their tolerance and dependency increase. An addiction is not drug tolerance. Simply put, the body is growing less sensitive to the effects of the drug addiction is a body chemically dependent on that drug. Drug tolerance is common among addicts, which encourages them to seek out stronger narcotics. What is the theory that examines the way our behavior is connected with our cognition and how learning processes play a critical role in the development of maladaptive behavioral patterns like substance abuse? A. Motivational interviewing MI. B. Cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT. C. Rational emotive behavior therapy, or EBT. D. Person centered therapy. B. Cognitive Behavioral Therapy CBT. Cognitive Behavioral Therapy CBT, was developed to address problem drinking without relapse, and was subsequently refined to treat cocaine users. The foundation of cognitive behavioral approaches is the idea that learning processes are crucial in the emergence of maladaptive behavioral patterns, such as substance abuse. By employing a number of techniques that may be utilized to stop taking drugs and address a variety of other issues that typically co-occur with them, people in CBT learn to recognize and alter hazardous habits. A crucial part of CBT is anticipating problems and boosting clients' self-control by helping them create effective coping strategies. Some particular strategies include researching the benefits and drawbacks of continued drug use, practicing self-observation to catch impulses early and recognize scenarios that can lead to use developing coping mechanisms for cravings, and avoiding high-risk situations. In the 12 steps outlined in the book of Alcoholics Anonymous, what is the first step? A. Came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. B. Admitted to God to ourselves and to another human being the exact nature of our wrongs. C. We admitted we were powerless over alcohol that our lives had become unmanageable. D. Made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. C. We admitted we were powerless over alcohol that our lives had become unmanageable. For many people in recovery, attending their first treatment facility or AA meeting is a crucial part of working step one. The humbling and straightforward act of asking for help effectively reveals helplessness and uncontrollability. Most addicts are weighed down by shame, remorse, guilt, and self-loathing when they first join AA. Additionally, they've developed a habit of keeping secrets from practically everyone thus revealing the type and severity of their drinking behavior goes against their natural tendencies. They could even find it completely odd, and they probably won't want to do it. Although it is less stressful to talk about their difficulties and uncontrollability than to transfer them covertly. A husband learns that his wife is abusing alcohol. She repeatedly apologizes and requests help, but she won't get in touch to set up an appointment. 
He ultimately gives the social worker a call and schedules a meeting. The social worker examining her drinking learns that most of the groceries and alcoholic beverage purchases are made by the spouse. He claims that he buys the alcohol to keep the peace, and because he is aware that she would experience delirium tremens if he did not provide it. He would occasionally call in sick to work when he knew she was having a particularly bad drinking binge out of concern for the kids. His behavior is best described as a codependent, b maladaptive, c addictive, d manipulative, A. Codependent. Codependent behavior is the best way to define this behavior. Since addiction affects the entire family, it is frequently a family issue. Codependent behavior includes making up justifications for the addiction, downplaying how far it has spread, covering for or hiding the addict's behavior, facilitating access to the drug to maintain harmony, and prevent strife and shirking important commitments and duties to make up for the addict's actions to ensure their or other safety. Which stage of change in addiction recovery is characterized by prolonged periods of abstinence and the inclination to turn to professionals for help before or after relapse? And it is where a person has made significant changes in their lives and is committed to the change process. A. Maintenance stage. B. Action stage. C. Preparation stage. D. Contemplation stage. B. Action stage. Action is the stage at which people change their behavior experiences or surroundings in order to solve issues. The most obvious behavioral changes result through action, which demands a major time and energy commitment. At this point, people believe they have the capacity to change their behavior and are actively engaged in employing a range of tactics to improve it. At this point of therapy self-care and self-understanding are present, but counseling is necessary to keep individuals on track. Maria is meeting with a 45-year-old contractor who reports that in effort to keep up productivity on a big project and receive a big bonus for completing the job early, he uses cocaine throughout the day. The client reports that he often operates the forklift with ease but accidentally knocked over a pallet of bricks the other day and injured another worker. Client reports that he started off using once in the morning and would be good for the rest of the day however, his use has increased to three to four times a day and he sometimes has to drive across town on his lunch break looking for more cocaine. And when he doesn't find any he experiences withdrawal, which causes him to leave the site and disappear until the next day. Client reports that every evening after work he would spend time with his children, but now, he and a female friend meet at the local bar and drink alcohol until closing which in turn has created conflict between him and his wife. According to the DSM-5, what is the severity of the client's substance use disorder? A. Mild substance use disorder. B. Severe substance use disorder. C. Moderate substance use disorder. D. Unspecified substance use disorder. B. Severe Substance Use Disorder The DSM-5 includes guidelines for clinicians to determine how severe a substance use disorder is depending on the number of symptoms. Two or three symptoms indicate a mild substance use disorder, four or five symptoms indicate a moderate substance use disorder, and six or more symptoms indicate a severe substance use disorder. A severe SUD is also known as having an addiction. There are six distinct roles that family members commonly take on when residing in a home where one or more members of the household are drug or alcohol dependent. Which role is referred to as the class clown, always trying to deflect the stress of the situation by supplying humor is usually taken on by the youngest child their fragile vulnerable and desperate for the approval of others provides comic relief as defense against feeling pain and fear, and often grows up to self-medicate with alcohol, perpetuating the cycle of addiction. A. The lost child. B. 
the hero c the mascot d the scapegoat c the mascot the youngest child in the family usually assumes the role of the mascot this is the child who learns early on that laughing reduces stress and tension and in response to conflict in the family tries to make things funnier mascots desperately try to hide the pain of the family by trying to be the center of attention while being funny and absurd they are frequently really adorable especially when young and great at making fun of themselves Despite their light-hearted facade, mascots feel helpless and puzzled about what is going on in the family. The family's pain is temporarily alleviated by the class clown performance, but there are no lasting remedies or healing. And, while they're amusing everyone else, they're frequently lonely confused and insecure and they're often filled with dread, grief and anguish. They avoid identifying their own emotions and do not develop the skills to work through their feelings, just as they divert others in the family from feeling pain. People in recovery from addiction will stop or reduce their use of addictive substances such as drugs and or alcohol, and will suffer symptoms such as insomnia, irritability, mood swings, sadness, anxiety, aches and pains, cravings, exhaustion, hallucinations and nausea. Symptoms might vary from moderate to severe depending on the individual. Severe symptoms might include paranoia, confusion tremors, and disorientation, especially when using drugs or alcohol. This process is known as A. Addiction B. Tolerance C. Reaction D. Withdrawal D. Withdrawal. Substance withdrawal is the body's physiological reaction to abruptly stopping or cutting back on the use of a drug on which it has grown dependent. Different physical, mental, and emotional symptoms can be a part of the many drug withdrawal syndromes, some of which can be fatal if left untreated. When a person becomes extremely dependent on a substance, withdrawal is frequently an inevitable reaction to the drug's unexpected absence or drop in blood concentration. Withdrawal symptoms may appear when a drug-dependent person stops using a substance cold turkey or drastically reduces how much they use. During withdrawal, the body seeks to re-establish homeostasis by ridding itself of any residual chemical impact of the substance in issue. This may briefly alter brain chemistry, which may have detrimental effects on both mental and physical health. In the 12 steps outlined in the book of Alcoholics Anonymous, what is the fourth step? a made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves b admitted to god to ourselves and to another human being the exact nature of our wrongs c came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity d having had a spiritual awakening as the result of these steps we try to carry this message to alcoholics and to practice these principles in all our affairs a. Made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. People must honestly evaluate themselves as part of the fourth step of the 12-step recovery program, which takes a great amount of bravery and humility. Making an inventory has no impact on anything, but it does make plain what is true and accurate. People who embrace their newly discovered clarity and self-awareness are prepared to look themselves in the eye and face the truth and they do so fearlessly, which means they do not allow fear, grief, or shame to stop them from taking a close look at their own lives and asking themselves important questions like, what prevents me from staying sober? What character traits, habits, or emotions stand between me and my goals? How did I contribute to my own problems? Which relationships in my life are harmful? What motivates me to do the difficult work of recovery?
In which recovery stage of change does an individual's confidence and belief in their ability to maintain sobriety long-term increase as a result of their hard work to prevent relapse by keeping up the lifestyle changes they made, like getting regular exercise, engaging in recreational activities, staying sober, paying attention to their sleep and hygiene, and by attending support groups. A. Contemplation stage. B. Preparation stage. C. Maintenance stage. D. Action stage. C. Maintenance stage. Maintenance entails effectively avoiding any temptations to revert to the undesirable behavior. The maintenance stage's objective is to keep the new status quo in place. In this stage, people frequently remind themselves of their accomplishments. People who are in maintenance continuously reevaluate their life's rules and learn new coping mechanisms to deal with life and prevent relapse. They are able to foresee potential relapse scenarios and have coping mechanisms ready in advance. Both Alcoholics Anonymous and Narcotics Anonymous are available to anyone at any level of recovery and provide encouragement and support to individuals who are beginning or maintaining sobriety. The recovering person may attend meetings indefinitely to keep their sobriety after official treatment is completed. These group interventions are referred to as A. Community-based treatment B. Talk therapy C. Inpatient treatment D. Self-help D. Self-help Professional therapy can be supplemented and extended by self-help groups. The most well-known 12-step self-help groups are Alcoholics Anonymous AA, Narcotics Anonymous NA, and Cocaine Anonymous CA, all of which adhere to the 12-step program. Most drug addiction treatment programs encourage patients to take part in self-help group therapy both during and after official treatment. When people are in recovery, these groups may be extremely helpful because they offer another level of community social support that helps them achieve and maintain abstinence and other good living habits over the course of their lives.